Hey, this is Mark with Eigen Designs and welcome back to my channel. About six months ago, I did a video about how I upgraded my single stage Delta Dust Collector and replaced it with a three horsepower two stage separator. In that video, I covered the unboxing and went over the fundamentals of physics that make this type of separation system a lot more effective than a single stage. I also took air velocity measurements and calculated some of the volumetric flow rates and did some data comparisons to show how big of an upgrade it was, but I didn't touch the ducting. Well, this is part two of that video series where I'm going to be replacing the four inch PVC ducting with this six inch spiral pipe. I'll then remeasure the air velocities at the same points in the system. So I've got some data to analyze and share my final thoughts and conclusions at the end of this video. So if you're looking at upgrading your dust collector or your ducting, then stay tuned because you might find this helpful. I'll begin this project by removing the existing ductwork that I have in my shop. There's a single four inch line that goes from the dust collector to my CNC. And then there's a separate four inch trunk line that feeds my jointer planer, my table saw, and my router table. The four inch PVC was held in place using some U-shaped pipe strap clamps and wooden cleats to provide a little bit of standoff from the wall. This all came down pretty quickly. What took the most time was actually removing the white duct tape on each of the seams I had originally installed that to reduce the amount of air loss at each of the connections and that duct tape really did not want to get off of those seams so that took the most time in this part of the project and with the four inch pvc removed we can now focus on the six inch spiral pipe now it's only two inches bigger in diameter but the cross-sectional area is actually more than twice as big and that'll allow this pipe to handle higher volumetric flow rates with less frictional losses more on that later now this spiral pipe is considerably more expensive than the thin walled HVAC ducting you can get from a big box store. And the reason for that is the spiral pipe is much more resistant to the collapse loads that you're likely to see whenever the dust collector is operating the system on a vacuum versus an HVAC system, which usually has positive pressure inside. So make sure to keep that in mind as you're designing your system. Now, one way you can save yourself a bit of money is to build an accurate scale model of your shop or even a really good drawing with the ductwork laid out exactly how it's going to be run. You can then use this to create an inventory of materials that you're going to need, including all your ducting, elbows, fittings, blast gates, all of that stuff to make your dust collection system work. I built this a long time ago in SketchUp to get a layout of my shop and understand where I could place certain tools. And I've continued to evolve it to keep up with my tool inventory and my dust collection. So here you see how my dust collection system is going to be laid out and each of those numbers correspond to where I'm going to be taking airflow measurements later in the video. I begin the installation process by laying out the different components roughly where they need to be based on the SketchUp model that we just got done looking at. To attach this pipe to the wall, I'm going to be using a combination of wooden cleats and some U-shaped pipe strap clamps. I make sure to batch out enough of these wooden cleats before I get started with the installation. I attach the cleats to the studs behind the drywall using some wood screws, and then I begin to place the ducting where it needs to be using some scrap wood to help temporarily support it while I get the strap clamps in place. I use a four foot level to make sure this run of ducting is completely horizontal. This was my first time working with metal ducting, which was a bit intimidating at first, but that quickly went away once I got the hang of how all these pieces fit together. Whenever you've got a coupling or an elbow or a blast gate, it simply slides on the inside of the spiral pipe, and then you can take an eighth inch drill bit and then pre-drill a couple of holes. I was generally doing about two or three per connection. And then you just take a little metal sheet screw and you put it inside of that pre-drilled hole to attach the two couplings together. And then you take some aluminum adhesive HVAC ducting tape and then you wrap the seam to make sure that there's no air loss between the connections. The only tricky part to this installation was actually cutting the spiral pipe to length. To do that, I used a metal blade with my reciprocating saw to make the actual cuts. And then I used a file to round over all the sharp edges before making the connections.
Once I got rolling with the installation, it went pretty quickly. I think I spent about 90 minutes on that first main trunk line, and then about a half an hour replacing the run to my CNC. So total time spent installing my dust collection piping was probably about two hours. And then the final step in this was just to attach some of the flex hosing to connect the rigid piping to my dust collector. With the new ducting installed, it's now time to take some measurements to see how big of a difference this has made. I'll be using this anemometer to take air velocity measurements at six different points within my system. By taking the air velocity measurements and using the inside diameter of the pipe, you can calculate the volumetric flow rate of air moving through that particular part of the system. I know this must sound really boring, but the amount of money it takes to either upgrade your dust collector or your ducting system or both is really significant. So I thought it would be helpful for my viewers to actually show some data to quantify how much of an upgrade you can expect when upgrading one or the other or even both of these to improve your dust collection in your shop. There's three different scenarios we'll be comparing today. The first is my original setup. The second is the improved dust collector. And the third is the improved dust collector with the upgraded six inch ducting. Each of the red numbers on this SketchUp model shows a point that airflow measurements were taken. The pathway to the table saw goes through points 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the airflow pathway to the jointer are points 1, 2, and 6. These are going to be the two primary reference cases that we're going to look at today. Let's begin by looking at the airflow at the jointer. About 80% of the piping in the run from the jointer to the dust collector was replaced with this upgraded 6 inch spiral pipe. So this represents the high side of what you can expect in terms of airflow improvement at your tool. So looking at the data, it shows that the tool is actually seeing 760 cubic feet per minute of airflow at the tool itself, which is nearly twice the minimum recommended airflow. What's more interesting is that there's been a 40% increase in airflow just from increasing the diameter of the pipe. What that's really saying is that the 4-inch PVC was undersized relative to the power of the dust collector, and that's been suffocating the airflow within the system. Now that's something that my intuition was telling me was happening, but now we've got some data to back that up. Now let's take a look at the airflow at the table saw. Only about a third of the piping in this run was impacted by the upgrade. And as you can see from the main trunk line, it wise into a four inch connection and it makes a jump across to my workbench using some four inch flexos, which is not ideal for airflow. Under my workbench, there's another Y that breaks the airflow into two parts. One part of the airstream goes to the overhead dust collection arm while the other is routed to the bottom side of the cabinet of the table saw. The airflow goes from points one, two, three, and then four and five. Point four is the airflow at the bottom of the cabinet, and then point five is the overhead dust collection arm. Because these are airflow to the same machine, I'm gonna combine them as a single point because that's more representative of the total airflow coming into the table saw. So when we combine those numbers, the tool is seeing 550 CFM at the table saw which only represents a 20% increase from the previous ducting system, but only a third of the piping system was affected by the upgrade, so that kind of makes sense. What's more interesting is 50% of the air loss in this system is coming from that short run of blue flex hose going from my main trunk line to the ductwork underneath my workbench. So if I was going to optimize this system further, clearly I would need to focus on that. And you can see this in the data. The slope of the line between nodes two and three, which is the blue flex hose, is the steepest across the entire system, indicating that's where most of the pressure losses are happening. So I know that's a lot of data, but let me summarize this into some final thoughts that you might find helpful. The first is don't neglect your ducting design when upgrading your shop dust collection. Now we don't often think about air as having mass, but it does have mass. And if it's moving within your ducting system, then it's also got velocity. So it's, if it's got mass and velocity, that means it has momentum. So think about that whenever you're laying out your ductwork and avoid sharp 90 degree turns because that contributes to a lot of 
uh, turbulent resistance within your ducting itself. Try to keep that ductwork as large as possible and neck down as close to the tool as you can and minimize the use of flex hose where possible. The second thing is if you're budget constrained, like many of us are, consider upgrading your ducting before the dust collector. This will be highly dependent on what your current shop looks like and what equipment you have, but in my specific case, the dollar per CFM increase was much more cost effective for the ducting upgrade than it was for the dust collector. So just keep that in mind as you're making some of those decisions. The last thing is to understand your shop's flow rate requirements before making any significant purchases. This applies for both how your shop is currently laid out and any future expansions that you have planned. The ducting layout and the sizing of your dust collector both need to be taking these things into consideration. From the ducting standpoint, it's a lot easier to add in a few drops or Ys that you add into a system and blank them off now, rather than trying to add them in retroactively later. So keep some of those things in mind. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you got something of value from this. I'll leave part one of this video series linked in the description below in case you wanna check that out. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my content coming out. All right, catch you on the next one.